It's been another action-packed week here in Starbase. We had the very first static fire of a booster since Starship's first integrated flight test. Plus, also a spin prime, who cares? We also saw Ship 28 moved back to the rocket garden so it can receive Raptor engines ahead of its own static fire test campaign. And the hot staging test article over at Massey's was prepared to be crushed in the can crusher. It's a lot to cover, so I'm Jack Byer with NSF, Let's get started. Let's begin over at the Massey's test site, where we saw Ship 28 conduct a multi-hour cryogenic proof test. This is the second of two proof tests that we've seen Ship 28 undergo here. SpaceX is really utilizing this new test site recently. This is significant because it frees up the orbital launch pad so that it can remain open and work on the infrastructure and vehicles here can continue without interruption. All while proof testing of other vehicles can still be conducted. The test seemingly went well, and with that, Ship 28 should be clear to receive its own Raptor engines for an upcoming static fire test campaign very soon. But before that, between the first and second proof tests of Ship 28, some welding was done near the GSE umbilicals that connect it to the ground tanks. Now, I'm not quite sure what they were welding, but interesting thing to take note of. Ship 28 is currently the favorite for use in Starship's third integrated flight, and it already features a completed heat shield. It soon became obvious that Ship 28's stay at Massey's was coming to an end, as we saw SPMTs with some counterweights headed up the highway and parked just outside the facility. Both Booster 10 and Ship 28 had seemingly quick stays here at Massey's, so hopefully that means their testing went well and teams encountered no issues. This speedy testing is also a good thing because pretty soon Ship 29, and yes, also Booster 11, will need to be moved to Massey's for their own test campaigns. After its second cryo-proof, Ship 28 was then loaded onto the previously mentioned SPMTs and rolled back to the production site, where it was lifted onto the Raptor installation stand and presumably will now receive Raptor engines. It was parked at the Rocket Garden briefly before being lifted onto that stand. So now all eyes are on Ship 28 in hopes of catching some of those Raptors being moved or installed. And in fact, that could have already happened by the time you watch this. Next door to the Rocket Garden over at the new Mega Bay, all four corners have now been lifted and installed on the structure, with the second and third corners having been installed earlier in the week. Now all that's left is for teams to secure this final corner and begin installing the cladding in between them. It's crazy how fast the second mega bay has gone up, and I can't wait to see it operational. Particularly because the door of the second mega bay is facing Highway 4. So hopefully, unlike the other bays, we should get some good views of the vehicles being worked on while they're inside of it. Next up, the Starlink payload loader box was moved back inside the Starlink building. And also, back outside, and then also back inside. Right now, it's outside. By the time you watch this, it could be inside. What's SpaceX doing? I don't know. The payload loader box will be used, as the name implies, to load Starlinks into Starships. But of course, so far there's no indication that a Starship will host Starlinks anytime soon. It seems Ship 28 would be the earliest possible vehicle up to the task at this point. Future ships are also progressing well. Not only is Ship 29 in a very advanced state, seemingly only needing some more thermal tiles, but also Ship 30 is now half stacked and continuing to grow. Soon SpaceX should have three fully built ships, 28, 29, and 30, ready for future flights. Don't, don't worry about Ship 26 in that count. I don't even know what they're gonna do with Ship 26. Probably gonna scrap it? Hard to say. Next up, the ground fabrication building, which was relocated to the other side of the production site on the edge of the Sanchez lot. It's slowly being reassembled here. It now features a roof, the walls seem mostly complete from a structural standpoint, and the door has even been installed and opened. Next up will be the cladding of the building. Back over on the other side of the production site, the expansion to the Star Factory building is progressing rapidly as well. The expansion continues to move closer to the road and is getting more and more roof segments. It's slowly starting to make an impact on the overall look of the production site. And it will be very interesting to see how futuristic the entire site looks once it's complete. And speaking of making an impact, we have a new merch design that we hope makes an impact on you. The Retro Starbase collection is available on mouse pads, t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and a bunch of other stuff. So if you like it, check it out. 
It's for everybody that's not only a SpaceX fan, but also a retro gaming nerd. And yes, video games used to look like this, kids, I swear. Link in the description. Next up is the return of the Raptor installation stand, which was moved from the production site back to the launch site after having some work done on it in the last few weeks. As the name implies, this stand is usually used for quick Raptor work and swaps when the dance floor is not needed. It was moved back to the orbital launch site where we wait to see if it's used on any Raptors. Also at the orbital launch site, some stairs were lifted. They were installed on the outside of the tower to the staircase that allows for easier access of the lower levels of the launch tower. These stairs now extend up to the level of the chopsticks while they're in their stowed or resting position. When they are sitting on the chop stops. Adrian, Adrian wrote chop stops. I'm, I'm not making it up. Am I actually supposed to say chop stops? Next up, we saw some SPMTs with counterweights moved to the launch site. This usually indicates the movement of something very heavy that needs to be properly ballasted. You know, like a ship or a booster. As we record this video, Ship 25 has been lifted off of suborbital pad B, and sign points to movement of Ship 25 very soon, perhaps even later today. Next up, while painting sometimes seems like a Sisyphean task here at the launch site, it's important for corrosion and thermal control, especially with the proximity to the Gulf of Mexico and its abrasively salty air. Most of the structures in Boca Chica feature some sort of corrosion protection to shield them against that salt air. All right, now let's talk about the hot stage ring. The ring, which is currently being prepared for testing at Massey's, was rolled out on top of a development booster forward dome section. Here you can see it without the final ship aft section sitting at the Massey test site. Testing this ring is a crucial milestone in preparation for the second integrated flight of Starship, as SpaceX intends to hot stage during this flight. Once the ring was on the crusher, a ship aft section simulator was installed on top of it. With this, the whole hot staging test article was now in place. The hot stage ring is now being prepared for its big day, and thus it needs a fancy outfit. So let's start with a hat. Once the cap was installed, the remaining item to be checked off the lift before testing begins was the installation of the ropes, or as some call them, dreadlocks, which happened late in the week, before they were then lowered down and ready to do their job, tugging on the cap and testing the hot stage ring. I've seen a lot of naysayers in the comments, so what do you think? Will the hot stage ring survive testing? Will SpaceX deliberately test it to failure? What do you think is going to happen? Hopefully we find out soon, but let us know what you think in the comments. Either way, this is a major test point to be completed ahead of IFT2, as previously mentioned. So all eyes are on Massey's. Next up, let's move our attention back here to good old Booster 9. Earlier in the week, Workers cleared several items out of Booster 9 that were probably needed for work inside the tanks. Of course, these items should not be in there during a spin prime or static fire test, as you always want clean tanks free of FOD or foreign object debris during these tests. Otherwise, you might damage the sensitive machinery and pumps of Raptor engines. Another indicator that a spin prime and static fire test campaign for Booster 9 was imminent was a slew of methane deliveries. Both tests require the fuel, spin prime and static fire, with the static fire, of course, needing way more of it. So seeing it delivered was a good sign for everybody. You also would not want the dance floor below the booster during spin primes and static fire testing. Hence, it was lowered and removed from the area for now. It was placed on the taco stand and rolled out of the way over to suborbital pad A. This was likely to keep it safe from any damage, or at least just out of the way from imminent booster testing. Another Booster 9 activity we captured this week was grid fin testing. Always nice to see these things move. The booster will use these, just as Falcon 9 does, for control as the booster heads back into the atmosphere and in the subsonic phase of landing. SpaceX scheduled closures on Friday, Sunday, and Monday, and Friday ended up being the day for B9's first round of engine testing. After spooling up the tank farm, the next thing we saw was the LOX tank getting frosty as SpaceX loaded LOX onto the vehicle along with a bit of methane. I should note here, during spin primes, both fuel and oxidizer are used, and you're essentially doing everything to the engine except for igniting the fuel. After starting the fire X system to make sure there's no methane accumulating below the booster, the spin prime of what appeared to be all 33 engines was conducted. SpaceX later confirmed on Twitter that the test was successful, and with that, the stage was primed for static fire test of booster nine. Get it? Because spin prime? A small note here, the ship QD also saw some movement and testing during the spin prime. And as you can see, the chopsticks were in launch position. 
Seems like a variety of systems got to work out during this test. Then it was time for the main event. Booster 9 was fueled, ready, and we saw the firing of not 33, but according to SpaceX, 29 Raptor engines. Directed for the first time at the new Delu system, which seemed to perform admirably. Although it remains questionable if this will be sufficient to not warrant a second static fire, based on the shorter than expected duration. Well, that's it for this action packed week. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other. Also, buy merch. <laughs>